You keep going back to rights, which is interesting to me, because I, I don't think of politics primarily through a lens of rights, but you do. You keep going back to rights. Mm-hmm. Say these fundamental rights to do whatever, whatever I want with my body in these circumstances or whatever. So, okay, if we're talking about rights, are all rights equal? Are all rights on this, you know, my right to have this pink fruity drink here, is that the same as your right to, I don't know, drive a car or something? No. I don't believe they're all equal, no. Okay, all right, so then there are gradations of rights. Some are more important than others. Is there one most important right that you would call it a fundamental right, the fundamental right? The right to your body and the right to decide what happens to your body. There's no right that, that precedes it? I mean, it depends. What, what rights do you think precede that, please? Well, it seemed to me that the, the right to your body and the right to do certain things to your body must necessarily be preceded by the right to life, without which you mm-hmm. would not have your body or the ability to do anything at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and as I've described, your right to life does not get to supersede or overwrite some, override someone else's right to bodily autonomy. But I thought we so just if, admitted that it did. Because we, I thought, you, you I thought we just that. agree. Oh, you didn't you agree with that. me. Okay. Because no. it seems to me, if we're going to have any rights at all, the right to drink my fruity drink, the right to have a lovely conversation in this kind of black room here, any of these other rights, that uh, all of those rights depend upon the right to life, which is not just one right among many, but it is the, it is the fundamental right. And so, therefore, if, if rights are to have any meaning at all, the right to life must supersede all of the other ones. And I disagree. I think that you have, I think you have a right to life, but your right to life does not override someone's right to bodily autonomy. Well, you're so saying that, but you, why is that true? Because you, as I've asked you quite a few times now, you cannot describe to me one instance except motherhood, where it is acceptable for oh, yeah. you to no, we, use we someone's... No, Motherhood's unique. But I'm, I'm just saying, what, you are saying that the right to do whatever you want with your body supersedes the right to life. It's more fundamental than the right to life. And I explained to you why I think that the right to life is fundamental and uh, more important than all those other rights. Mm-hmm. And I gave you, maybe you don't like my argument or something, but I think I at least spelled it out in a way that's fairly clear and logical. So what is your argument as to why the right to control your own body Uh, is uh, more fundamental than the right to life. Because I think that if you allow the government to decide that someone else's right to life can override your right to bodily autonomy, that is opening the door for a lot of terrifying things to happen. This is why you have to volunteer to be an organ donor. This is why you have to volunteer to be a blood donor. Things like that. If, If we allowed the government to say that someone else's right to life can supersede your right to your body, that is a pretty terrifying amount of power to give to the government. No, but we're, we're speaking about, I mean, you're talking about organ donations, but we're speaking about this unique case, right? Because No, we're, we're talking about the use of your body. Right. But, but for instance, Bronte, uh, I have kidneys. I don't, need, I don't need both of my kidneys. I, maybe I do to filter all these terrible things I put into my body, but I don't really need both of them. I could give them to someone else. But it would be wrong if the government came in and said, Michael, we're taking your kidney now because Bronte needs it. I might Mm -hmm. give it to you voluntarily, but I certainly wouldn't want someone coming in, gunpoint, taking my kidney away. That would be wrong, even if you you were in dire straits. I I wouldn't, I I still might give it to you, but I don't want someone taking it from me. And I don't think that I have an obligation to give you my kidney. Because my kidney is for filtering my blood. That's what it's for. Right. In the same way, a woman's womb is for nurturing a child. That is the telos, that is the the purpose of the womb. It serves no other purpose. Uh, So I don't think that the the analogy that you're making here is apt. I think, once again, it gets back to the unique status of motherhood. So the uh, the same thing can be said for your liver, right? Your liver... Well, no one wants my liver. (laughs) <laughs> well, but your liver, the purpose of your liver is to detoxify your blood. It can, it can process alcohol. It can process all kinds of toxins. But if I don't ingest those toxins, then my liver doesn't have to do that job. If I don't choose to harbor a fetus, my uterus doesn't have to harbor that fetus. Just because your body can do something well, doesn't mean that you should be compelled to, for it to do If you choose not to have a drink, then your liver is not going to process alcohol. It's, there's no way the alcohol got in there. But if you decide after, I don't know, you know, you had a crazy weekend, you went out here to Nashville, met a nice guy, you would never do this, but I'm saying, you know, women of ill repute would go out and, you know, they meet a guy, he's not so nice. Anyway, the next morning she finds out she's pregnant. 
really four weeks later she like, finds out. Fast. But it'd be very fast. fast. But mothers know, you know. And uh, anyway, she finds out she's pregnant. She says, oh, darn, I don't want to be pregnant. And, uh, you know, that, that baby has no right to be in my womb. Mm -hmm. She is engaged in behavior that, that would introduce the baby into her womb okay. in the way that uh, if, if you put the drink down, you will not be introducing alcohol to your liver. So should we then deny health care to alcoholics because they partook in behaviors that caused them to have liver failure? No, should we no. deny smokers access to medical care because they, they partook in, you know, in behaviors that damaged their lungs? No, no. No, but you believe we that— We shouldn't kill them, though. I don't think we should kill them, you know, or steal their livers or anything like that. Just it's like I don't think equivalent. we should—I don't think we should go in and kill the baby just because the. But you are baby. saying that you get to judge someone based off of their behaviors, and because of those behaviors, no, no, I'm, well, and because of those behaviors, you believe that they should be denied access to health care in order to address the effects of those behaviors, and not if it's a drinker, not if it's a smoker, but if it's a woman, then sure, now we get to remove the right to her body and the effects of her behavior. No, well, and I, I guess we're we're again missing the point. I don't think a mother ever has the right to kill her child in any circumstances. So. I, 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 I'm not uh, suggesting that we single mothers out here or that it'd be very judgmental or anything like that or deny anybody health care. I just don't think that killing a baby is ever health care. I think that's a euphemism. And it, that's where as you're you wrong. you kind of admitted at the top. No, that's where you're wrong. When we talk about wrong. the distinction between babies and fetuses. See, and that's, that's where you're wrong, though, because when we, we've talked about maternal mortality rates, we've mm -hmm. talked about the number one cause of death for pregnant people is homicide. Maternal mortality is still very low, by the way. Right. Do you know the amount of people who have, do you know the difference between maternal mortality and maternal morbidity? Uh, no. Okay. Enlighten me. So morbidity is essentially unforeseen or serious health effects of a medical condition. So maternal morbidity is when someone experiences severe complications yep. of pregnancy and labor. And I know that you think that seven to 800 women dying annually from pregnancy is too low for you to, to care. But oh, no, but, I, I but, we should bring the number down, but right. we shouldn't kill 850,000 babies to, uh, right. to pretend to resolve that. So 60,000 people every year have serious maternal morbidity, which means um, there's certain codes that they use and um, like insurance codes that they use to determine whether or not you experienced a severe side effect. And some of those codes are being having an ICU admission or needing multiple blood transfusions, things like that. And 60,000 women every year are admitted into the ICU or need blood transfusions, what have you, that's, that that's qualify. That's the whole definition of, uh, of a severe comorbidity? Comor There's, I think, We're 10, talking about 10 ICU or, or are we talking about certain things that are less severe? It's severe. The, that what would six, be some 60, of the other examples? So it depends because it can be sepsis, hemorrhage, um, I think pulmonary embolism. There's there's multi there's multitudes of different complications that. Can't well, we're not be talking classified. about something like tearing or something like that. No, that's minor, and that's not included in sixty thousand. So that's my point: is sixty thousand women every year experience severe morbidity, and that's not including the women who just develop things like diabetes or have a perineal tear. Oh, well, this is, that's actually a very important point that you bring up of some of these problems that go along with pregnancy because something that the abortion advocates mention that often is not addressed by the pro-life movement, not, not that I think it needs to be, but it's interesting nonetheless, is that the United States is not the best when it comes to maternal mortality. We're not the worst, but we're not the best, and, and there are lots of problems with it. But the, the reason for that, of course, is not because of any uh, conspiracy among the doctors or you know, misogyny or anything like that, I don't think. I think it probably has more to do with America's disproportionate rates of obesity and heart disease and diabetes. You look especially, it's not as though uh, complications of pregnancy are the same across all demographics. It's largely concentrated in black women. And uh, the reason for that it would, seem to, would seem to me is that black women are much more likely to be obese and have heart problems and have diabetes and all those things that, are, that, that, that do factor into to pregnancy problems. But that, that's not a, again, I don't think any of that is a good argument to kill a bunch of babies every single year. Uh, but that seems like a, a health issue that should be addressed elsewhere, right? 